Welcome to episode seven. In this episode, we're diving into the control electronics of the AR4 robotic arm, connecting up the joint one motor and encoder wires and all of the electronics, including the Tensi microcontroller. So let's dive right in and have a look at all of the wiring. Using some liquid electrical tape, we apply a generous amount around the joint one motor and encoder wires. This also goes into the top of the braided sleeve joining the whole lot together and holding that braided sleeve in place. Once it's dried, we can then trim off all of the excess braided sleeve with a scalpel to really clean up the joint. Making some space on our work area, we can now get both of the electrical kit bags, which we'll be using throughout this video. We remove the CAT6 cable from electrical bag 2 of 2, uh, which can be seen here. In the build manual, it does say CAT5, but in this one, it came as CAT6. We then cut a 145 millimeter, so 14 and a half centimeter long length, and repeat that twice. Grabbing a Stanley knife, we can extend a tiny sliver of the blade, which comes out and is just enough to go through the outer casing of this CAT6 cable. We can then peel the outer casing back to expose the four pairs of colored wire inside, which are both striped and solid. These are orange, brown, blue and green. Set aside the orange striped cable as we'll be using this later on in the project. We then repeat this process with the second length 14 and a half centimeter wires and separate out all of these pairs before stripping the wires uh, as you can see here. So all the various pairs have been stripped. The uh, two brown pairs, two blue pairs, two green pairs and the orange cables are separated out into the striped orange and solid orange. We then take a ruler and we cut five lengths of five centimeter uh, solid orange wire from the two separate solid orange wires. At this point, we bring the uh, J1 base enclosure uh, at the full robotic arm assembly to date back onto our workbench. We've got all of the joint one wires here. We have from the CAT6 cable that we've just spliced up, the longer um, striped orange cable, which we'll set to the side, two green and striped green pairs, two of the blue and striped blue pairs, two brown and striped brown pairs. And we also have five pairs of 50 millimeter long uh, jumpers for the opto terminal. Uh, these will uh, jump all of the opto terminals uh, together on the stepper motor drivers uh, within the box. So uh, all of that will we'll go through now and wire it into the terminal blocks. Painting the J1 base enclosure so that the motor wires are closest to us, we can remove the terminal blocks from the left-hand side of the stepper motor drivers. Into these, we're going to install the striped and solid wires, as well as some jumper cables, which were the small orange wires, which will couple all of the uh, opto couplers together. Into the terminal block that was closest to us, we also install one of the longer striped orange cables into the opto terminal, as this will go up to the Tensi board in a future step. So we go through each of these, installing the blue, then green, then brown uh, wire pairs and repeating that again. So from the bottom, it goes uh, blue, then green on the second motor uh, driver, brown on the third motor driver, then back to blue, green and brown. We make it such that the solid uh, wire is on the left hand most side terminal of the terminal blocks. The striped wire is in the middle, and then the solid orange jumper cable is in the opto terminal or the third from the left. The process of wiring all of the stepper motor drivers with the control wiring is quite tedious and took me about 20 minutes to complete, including adding each three sets of wires into the respective terminal blocks, then making sure that they were all uh, correctly paired with the orange jumper wires. Complicating this process is the fact that the wire is quite thin, and if you crimp it too much when you're stripping it, when you put it into the terminal block, it can actually break off the end of the wire. But for this reason, I did go through and actually tin the ends of all of these strips of wire before putting them into the terminal block, which did help quite a lot. But as you can see here, there were some issues uh, wiring in opto uh, jumper leads, which we finally got there and managed to wire the whole, whole lot together. 
So getting to the end of the process now, we put the final terminal block in. At this point, you might want to do a continuity check using a multimeter to check that all of the connections are firmly done and that the opto jumpers are correctly uh, bridging all of the terminal blocks. As you can see here, at this stage, we have our motor and encoder wires from the J1 motor going into the electrical enclosure. We have all of our step and motor control wires installed as well as the power cables. Bringing back our trusty Cat6 cable, we cut a 210 millimeter length, which we then use the Stanley knife to carefully cut the outer sheath away from the cable to expose the pairs of wire inside. Once we do that and dispose of the center core and the outer sheath, we can separate those pairs of wires and bring back our electric kit bags one and two. From kit bag one, we remove the USB-C adapter, the keystone jack, the keystone cover and the terminal block. From kit bag two, we remove the TNC microcontroller and the TNC microcontroller breakout board that will be used in the next step for wiring together all of the control electronics to the upper electronics tray. This process starts with the wiring of the CAT6 keystone jack. Seen here, it has eight terminals uh, which are used for terminating the ends of the four pairs of wire. We put the striped brown wire into the front left terminal when the port is facing towards you. The solid brown wire goes behind that and we use a crone tool to terminate that connection, pressing it down into the terminal. Once done, it should look like this. We then repeat the process with the orange wires in the bottom right hand side seen from the front, then the solid orange wire position behind that. Next, we put the striped green wire behind the solid brown and the solid green behind the striped green. Finally, on the other side, we put the striped blue behind the solid orange and the solid blue behind that. That's all eight uh, wires terminated and we can coil it up, to make it easier to route into the box. We now retrieve the J1 electronics tray where we press fit the CAT6 keystone jack into the right hand side hole on the back when viewing the tray from the very front. We do the same with the USB-C keystone jack with the USB-C adapter cable coming out the left hand side and really pressing it in to bring it so it's flush with the front of the electronics tray. Grabbing the Teensy microcontroller, which we had from the AR4 electrical kit bag one, we can take it out of the anti-static bag and then mount it into the Teensy breakout board. We make sure that the smaller numbers are pointing towards the left. Install the Teensy microcontroller into the board with the USB plug oriented towards the left hand side. Using two number six thread screws, we screw the Teensy breakout board into the electronics tray and then remove the USB-C cable, plug that into the Teensy microcontroller and then neatly route it and plug it back into the keystone jack. After installing these jacks, we now finish off the installation of the physical components by installing the terminal block into the top right hand side of the electronics tray. There are two holes that were part of the 3D print and we use these as pilot holes, uh, which is made easier using a magnetic screwdriver and the number six thread form screws. So here you can now see a really good example of the finished electronics enclosure tray, which has the Tensi breakout board, the Tensi microcontroller on top of that, the keystone jacks for the USB-C and ethernet cable, and then the terminal block in the top right hand corner. Here you'll see me wiring the wires from the CAT6 keystone jack into the breakout board. We wire the striped brown wire into terminal 32, then the solid brown wire into terminal 33 located near the terminal block in the back right of the box. After this, we then move on to the green striped wires where we route the green striped wire around to the front of the box to the brown terminal in the front right side. Cutting it to length and then stripping it, we put that into the terminal and we uh, put the solid green wire into the 3.3 volt terminal denoted by the red label that says 3V3. Moving on now to the blue pair of wires. These are located in terminal 37 and 36, quite close to the terminal block at the back. 
After cutting the wires to be quite short, we can also strip the ends so they'll fit nicely into the terminals. And install the striped wire into terminal 37 and the solid blue wire into terminal 36 on the back. The final pair of wires are the orange wires. We untangle them here as we have a short solid orange wire going to terminal 13, whilst the longer orange striped wire is going to terminal 12. Due to the fragility of the wire and also the short length, instead of using the wire strippers, I actually use a Stanley knife here to just cut off the outer sheath before fitting it into the terminal. Following this, we then take the orange striped wire, turn the terminal block around, make sure that we can route it all the way around neatly to terminal 12, with a little bit of excess room, strip it and fit it into the uh, breakout board. Moving away from the small wires of the stepper motor drivers and electrical enclosure board, we go up a few gauges to the motor wires, running them into the enclosure and making sure that they can fit all the way to the terminal block uh, for joint wire. After this, we now uh, wire them into that terminal block with the black wire being next to the red jumper, the green next to that, followed by the red, and finally the blue wire. Once these are all installed, we can put the terminal block into the stepper motor driver. Now that we have the motor wires installed and the electrical enclosure box put together, we can uh, mechanically join the two parts together by sliding the electronics tray onto the top of the J1 base enclosure and then using two number six thread screws, thread those into the hinge points on either side of the electronics tray. Using the offcuts from the motor wires before, we measure them across the breakout board from the power terminal blocks in the bottom right hand side as seen from the back across to the terminal block in the back left. We then connect these with the red wire on the right hand side terminal, the black in the middle and the blue wire on the left hand side terminal. Once these three wires are screwed into the terminal block, we can slip a sleeve of heat shrink over the top. This is simply to make it a little bit neater in the electronics tray and allow us to easily tuck it underneath the keystone jacks. As seen here, we can tuck it underneath those keystone jacks, remove the USB-C cable to give us a bit more access and then pull those three wires up on the other side. Located behind the USB-C keystone jack is the main power terminal block for the TNC breakout board. It contains the 3.3 volt terminal, which we wire the blue wire into, the ground terminal, which the black wire goes into, and finally we wire the red wire into the 5 volt terminal on the right hand most side. As you can see, using needle nose pliers coupled with the correct terminal screwdriver makes this task quite easy. Having wired the inputs from the CAT6 keystone jack into the TNC microcontroller via the breakout board, we now move on to the output side of the TNC microcontroller. This begins with wiring the striped orange wire, which goes from the optocoupler up into the 3.3 volt terminal of the terminal block in the back right hand corner. Next, we route the blue wires from the J1 motor driver all the way across the enclosure and put the solid blue wire into terminal zero and the striped blue wire into terminal one. This is then followed by taking the green wires from the J2 stepper motor driver, installing the solid green wire into terminal two and the striped green wire into terminal three. Routing those in the box, we then move on to the joint three stepper motor driver, bring the solid brown wire and installing that into terminal four and the striped brown wire installing into terminal five. We then repeat this with the remaining three stepper motor drivers, uh, installing the J4 wires into six and seven, the J5 wires into eight and nine, and the J6 wires into 10 and 11. This is using the same wiring pattern where it's the solid, then the striped. With the last of the stepper motor control wires wired into the TNC breakout board, we can now go across to our J1 motor wires. We separate out the motor wires from the encoder wires and then cut off the green, yellow, orange and white encoder wires at the exit of the PG21 gland on the inside of the enclosure. Hold on to these wires as they're used in the next step as the extension wires for the J1 limit switch. 
with the remaining encoder wires, route the blue and brown wires around the back to terminals 14 and 15. Looking from above, we can now wire in the four encoder wires. So the black encoder wire goes to the center of the terminal block, the red to the left hand most terminal as seen from above, the blue goes to terminal 14 and the brown to terminal 15. With the electrical enclosure box now really coming together, we can get one of the limit switches, the larger limit switches from the AR4 Mark III will kit bag one and uh, put it into our third arm assembly. This is a major upgrade from a previous video where I was having to manually solder the parts together and having the, the third hands certainly helps with uh, soldering all of the parts together. So we solder the green wire to the lug that's on the bottom or outside of the limit switch, the orange wire to the center uh, lug, and finally the yellow wire to the lug on the other side of the limit switch. Once this is done, you'll see that the yellow wire is on the side closest to the switch itself, the orange is in the middle, and the green is on the back of that limit switch. All of those nicely soldered together, and we can now go through and properly insulate this with some liquid electrical tape, applying a copious amount to cover up the lugs themselves, all of the soldering and uh, join together the wires so it's nicely routed at the point of the limit switch. So here we can see it with the liquid electrical tape and all of the joints properly soldered together for that limit switch. To neatly route the J1 limit switch wires back to the base enclosure box, we cut a 15.5 centimeter length of the quarter inch braided sleeve, which we then singe the ends with a lighter, which binds the fibers together and stops it splitting when we put the wires through. We can then feed the three J1 limit switch wires through the braided sleeve and once again use the lighter just to close it up before putting some liquid electrical tape in there, binding the braided sleeve to the J1 limit switch. Having waited for the liquid electrical tape to have set, we can now install the J1 limit switch to the back of the J1 turret housing. This is oriented such that the uh, switch arm is pointing to the left hand side of the robot arm when viewed from the rear of the robot. We use two M3 by 14 screws provided in the AR4 hardware kit. And I'll now give you a bit of a break from my voice so you can hear the robot for yourself. As the penultimate step of wiring the joint one uh, limit switch into the into the J1 base enclosure, we have to feed the uh, thinner quarter inch braided sleeve through the PG21 gland. With all of the electronics in place, it's now actually quite difficult to get these cables inside. So routing them and using pliers at the same time to reach down, grab all three strands and pull them into the box really helps. Once into the box, as seen here, uh, we strip the ends of the wires after running them over to the terminal block and we feed the yellow wire into the center block and the red wire into the terminal block closest to us. So from the left hand side, if looking at the robot arm from the back. Finally, switching from the larger screwdriver to the smaller terminal screwdriver, we put the green wire from the limit switch into terminal number 26 on the breakout board. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode and I'll see you in episode eight for the wiring and installation of the joint two motor.